the NFL draft is coming up. We are, you know, about what's five, six weeks away, six weeks away yeah, from something like that. Um, the NFL draft. You have written something for Pro Football Focus where you're talking about some of your favorite fits for every team in the NFC and the AFC. And I just wanted to start with your AFC one for the Buffalo Bills, because I think the idea of Brian Thomas, the receiver from LSU, who smashed speed score stuff over the combine, he's a bigger receiver. I think he ran, he ran the four threes, like a four three four off the top of my head. They need someone to replace that field stretcher role. Now that like Gabe Davis is with the Jacksonville Jaguars, who knows if Stefan Diggs makes it through the season as a Buffalo Bill. It's touch and go with him every single day, it seems like. Um, but Brian Thomas to the Bills, that's a, that's a fit that I really like. Uh, you want to go in more about how you made that selection? Yeah, I mean, kind of ex- exactly what you said. I mean, you're you're losing Gabe Davis, but when you look at the rest of the pieces on the roster, Stefan Diggs is pretty much your like do-it-all receiver. And you've got two really nice versatile, I would say, slot options where I think Khalil Shakir is emerging as the smaller, shiftier slot guy. So, you know, if you know you're going up against a team that typically likes to guard the slot with linebackers or with like bigger safeties, okay, maybe a shiftier, quicker separator can can help you out there. Or if you're going up against a team that typically likes to guard the slot with smaller players, a smaller safety, maybe a smaller corner. They've got Dalton Kincaid, which they could put in that spot, but they're still, and I think we saw this last year, missing that go-to vertical element of the offense. And whatever you think of Brian Thomas Jr. and what he could become as a receiver at the NFL level, what we already know he does really well is stretch the field and win vertically. You know, some people go, okay, well, I've talked to people who have him as wide receiver four because they think he could be a more diverse route runner. They think he could do a lot more stuff um, when it comes to in breaking routes and things over the middle and just being a more complete receiver. I've talked to people who have him more as like wide receiver six, seven, eight, because they believe that he's just a vertical receiver. But no matter where you fall, it's perfect for the Bills because what he already is right now is exactly what you need and worth a back end of the first round pick for sure for where they're at. Um, and then obviously if he blossoms into more than that, then just that's, that's all the better. So that is one that kind of, for the reasons that you said as well, like I would echo, that's a, it's a great fit for Buffalo who did a lot more roster reconstruction than I thought they were going to do. So I I wonder how that's all going to affect how competitive they're able to be. We, We knew that they were sort of towards the end of this winning window, but man, it felt like they got rid of a lot of people over the last couple of days. So Obviously, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that uh, affects how competitive they could be. Uh, another one, and this is going to lead to an existential question that I've been grappling with for the NFL draft. Uh, you have the Broncos with an early round fit being uh, Michigan quarterback J.J. McCarthy, which I asked you, mm-hmm. is he good? Is he good? I don't know. I think, yeah, yes, I think, yes, I think, I think that J.J., I think that J.J. is good. Um, I hated JJ's 2022 tape. I thought he was so far away from being an NFL quarterback. I thought he could not feel pressure. He did not have a good feel for the pocket. He was slow in his reads, didn't really recognize things the way that he needed to pre-snap, got fooled by a lot of different stuff post-snap as well. Like 2022 just was not good. 2023, he got better, in my opinion, at all of those things. Now, not like elite at it, but for him to progress in that manner as a whole... I think was really, really encouraging. I gave JJ McCarthy a late first, early second round grade, meaning like even with positional value um, taken into account, I would love to take this guy at the back end of the first round. Um, I'd love to give him the Jordan Love situation. You know, you're taking him in the 20s, back into the first round. You're sitting him behind somebody. He's able to learn. He takes over. And I think that he could look fantastic the way that Jordan Love looks. But we know that that's not just how the NFL operates. It's so very rare that you get a situation that's like that. So instead, now we've got to try to justify to ourselves, all right, well, are are the Vikings going to trade up to five or three to draft him as like QB three in this class? Because that's a lot. That's kind of a different conversation. You're, You're basically starting him right away at that point. So that's kind of a tough thing to grapple with. But the reason why I like him as a fit for the Broncos, one, it's outside the top 10. I'm a little bit more comfortable with that. But two, 
I do like the idea of him getting to work with Sean Payton. And people do talk about how J.J. McCarthy can process things. And I, I did watch him get better, again, at, at recognizing things pre-snap to be more aggressive post-snap. And I just feel as though getting to work with Sean Payton um, in some sort of capacity, whether he's starting right away or not, is a pairing that I like for for uh, potential J.J. destination. So that's why I ultimately went with a fit there. Yeah, I'm still not convinced. Oh. That's, I mean, that's fair. That's fair. He, <laughs> he's got JJ. like what? He, he, he's, got, he's got three career games where he's had over 300 yards passing, right? I think like it's, it, 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 it's not a lot, whatever the number it is. They just did not ask a lot of him. So drafting a quarterback that high, who you are probably going to immediately have to ask a lot from, is a dangerous game. So I get it. Yeah. I totally get anybody who's super hesitant about where he's being mocked right now. If like if JJ gets drafted high, and we we know that we know the track record, guys outside of a few instances, guys are not sitting as rookies anymore. No, no. Um, there's been a couple where they sit, but for the most part, you're you're playing. I I almost feel like you would just have to throw out his entire rookie season. I, I he's gonna be asked to do so much more than he was in college that I only think it'll be fair to even like hardcore judge that. And it, it feels mm-hmm. kind of lame to say that before he even takes a snap. Like, eh, that, what you do this year, unless it's brilliant, doesn't really matter to me because you're playing such a different game than you were before. Um, but, you know, I, I kind of struggle with the part, like, you know, it, it, you, didn't, you didn't do all that much in college, mm-hmm. but you weren't asked to. And if I was Michigan, I wouldn't ask them to do much either. I mean, we can run the ball 40 times a game for 250 yards and win a national championship that way. Ultimately, that's the most important thing if I'm if I'm Jim Harbaugh. Um, but still, for draft evaluation purposes, I'm like I, I've been going back and forth, but I just I just want to see uh, a little bit more before we get out of here. Give me one of your fav- favorite, just you know, later round picks that you had uh, as a part of your article. Maybe for a team that uh, that already has a quarterback. Oh, actually, you know, funny enough, I actually liked Leonard Taylor the third taking a chance on him, the Miami defensive tackle to the Las Vegas Raiders. But I, I did not know that they were going to give a crap ton of money to <laughs> to um, <laughs> to Christian Davis or uh, Christian Wilkins. I think that's still a perfect situation for him because. Yeah, actually, dude, that's uh, true. That's true. OK, because I got I got to say, uh, when I started watching prospects, Leonard was projects to be like a first round pick. And I yes. looked at the tape and I said, man, y'all gotta be kidding me. This is not, <laughs> this is not a first round player, not even close. And then, you know, which, and then it's funny because- which, 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 did did you, were you watching 2023 tape or did you watch the 2022 stuff? I started with 2023. The, the Texas A&M game was the first game I watched and I was like, this guy's not draftable. Yeah. Um, He's right. It's it, the 2023 stuff is not good. It's not. Yeah. Well, then I I was like, I was, I had one of those moments where I was like, am I missing something? Like, because usually when you're, you're talking about like a first round defensive lineman, you, there's usually like at least stats. And I went back to like just his little stats page. I was like, oh no, like there's, n- there's nothing here really. But in the late rounds, like a former five star, like, you know, you're at least dealing with like a body type that, mm-hmm. that has been coveted for a while. You're dealing with athleticism that's been coveted for a while. Um, and if he can get into a situation where he doesn't have to play right away or doesn't have to be relied on to be like the big dog up front, like he was in Miami and, you know, that right. didn't really go well for him. I, I do still kind of like that fit. Um, cause maybe yeah. he, he's a guy where if you put him next to, to Max Crosby and Christian Wilkins, he can kind of figure it out with some easier blocking assignments than he faced in college. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have another one. As you were talking, I was scrolling back the list and it was looking at mine. Kalen Carson, the cornerback from Wake Forest, I love the fit with him going to the Detroit Lions. Now, like the Lions traded for Carlton Davis, so they're obviously trying to make moves at the cornerback position anyways. If they end up going with offensive or defensive line in the first round or or just don't get corner with their first couple of picks, I love the Carson fit to them specifically because when you listen to their coaches talk, like, oh, what do you look for in players? Physicality and tackling. If you can't do those things, you're not getting on the field. It's like, all right, noted. Carson loves to tackle. Like, he's just super physical, loves to come downhill. I'm a little bit worried about the overall athleticism, but I love them coming out of the summer when I watched his tape from last season because he 
was just not afraid to go up and hit you. And, and he just, he loves to set the tone. He loves to be physical, loves to tackle. Like that to me is a great late round fit is uh Kalen Carson going to Lions. I have no idea who that is. So I'll, uh, you gotta I'll, I'll get to it. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll get you on that now. Or trust me. Um, no, I haven't decided yeah, what I'm going to do yet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you ask me in an hour, maybe I'll say I want to watch them. But at the end of a one-hour podcast, <laughs> I think I'll just take your word for it. That's fair. Uh, That's fair. 